Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is another tricky IGCSE question. This is certainly a grade nine question. It's number 22 on an IGCSE paper. Uh, it's on perpendicular lines, which is a really tricky topic. And um, personally, I found this one quite difficult myself, uh, and it's quite unique actually, and I'll explain why whilst I get into the question. Um, and yeah, so let's get into it. So the first thing I would do, because it says that there's a triangle here, um, I would just draw a triangle to get some sort of perspective as to what we're working with. I always find that quite useful for these types of questions. Okay, and if you do, um, if you want to do more uh, grade nine type questions, and I've got a session tomorrow, which is Sunday, um, uh, so check that out. Link in the description. I'm just going to be going, be going over some of the hardest IGCSE questions um, to get people practice for grade nine. Okay, so what we've got, we've got H at the top, um, uh, we've got J over here, and we've got K here. Um, now, I mean, it doesn't actually matter where they are. This is just a sketch. It's not actually exactly on a coordinate diagram, but it gives me an idea of what, to, what, what I'm working with. So it says here that HJ is the same as um, HK. Um, it says that the distance between these two um, is root 80. Um, and it also says that we know the coordinate of minus 1, 4. Now, this is the strange part of this question because, I mean, this makes this question really unique. This bit of information here, you don't need this bit of information to solve the question. And Edexcel IGCSE, again, like 99% of the time, you must use all the information that's given to you in order to solve the question. But for the, from strange reason, this question, you don't actually need that bit of information. And that really threw me when I was doing this earlier. But anyway, that's J15, um, and this one over here is um, 6K. Okay, um, we also know that M is the midpoint, and we know that if I draw a line down like this to M, then this is going to have a gradient of 2. Now what we need to do is we need to find J, and we need to find K. So because we've got two unknowns here, we're going to need to create two equations from all the information that we've got. Um, and the first thing that jumps out to me is the fact that this line has a gradient of 2. And we know that in an isosceles triangle, the height, or the perpendicular height, is perpendicular to the base. So whatever that blue line gradient is, which actually we know it's 2, it's going to be perpendicular to the green line. And that green line has J and K on it, so we can work out its gradient. So because it's perpendicular to the blue line, which has a gradient of 2, it'll have a gradient of negative um, 1 over 2, the, the, um, uh, the negative reciprocal. Uh, and to find the gradient, I would do Y2, which is K, minus Y1, which is 15, over... Um, x2, which is 6, minus x1, which is j. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, and the next thing I would do would be to multiply, uh, cross-multiply like this. So multiply 6 minus j by minus 1, and 2 by k minus 15. So that would give me positive j and minus 6 would be equal to... Um, 2k minus 30 and then that will give me that j is equal to 2k minus 24 and that's about as far as I can take that bit of information um, there's a so what we need to do is find a second equation now uh, so what have I done I mean I've used this information and that information what have I not used is um, this information here the fact that this distance here is root 80. So let's use the distance formula. So the distance formula um, tells us that the change in the y, so that is k minus 15 squared, plus the change in the x, which is 6 minus j squared, is equal to, uh, sorry, when square rooted, is equal to the length of a line segment, which in this case is root 80. Okay. Right, we can solve this. 
Uh, and we can do that by first um, squaring both sides, which is going to remove the square roots. And now we've got two equations here, um, one linear and one quadratic. So like when we solve quadratic simultaneous equations, we're going to substitute the linear one into the quadratic one. So by doing that, this is going to give me, um, well, what is actually, what's 6 minus j we know is 2k minus 24. So that's the same as 6 minus 2k plus 24. So that's minus 2k plus 30. Okay, so minus 2k plus 30. Minus, whoops, minus 2k plus 30 squared, and that equals 80. Okay, now we need to expand these brackets. Um, so k minus 15 times k minus 15 is going to give me k squared. It's going to give me minus 15k minus another 15k and plus 225. So in total, that's k squared minus 30k plus 225. And what about if I do minus 2k plus 30 times minus 2k plus 30? Two minuses make a plus, so that's 4k squared. We're going to get minus 60k. We're going to get minus another 60k. And we're going to get plus 900. So overall, that's plus 4k squared minus 120k plus 900 equals 80. Okay, brilliant. Right, I can get rid of this stuff now. Okay, so how does that simplify? Well, there's 5k squared, there's minus 150k, there's plus 1, 0, no, 1, 1, 2, 5 is equal to 80. We want that to equal 0 so we can solve it because it's a quadratic. So what we do is we subtract 80 from both sides which gives me this. Uh, I've spotted that I can divide each term by five, so I'm gonna do that just to save myself um, time when I need to solve this quadratic. Uh, dividing through is gonna make it easier. Okay, so I'm gonna use a hack to solve this. Uh, I'm gonna to go to my calculator, I'm gonna go down to equation, and I'm gonna go polynomial two, and I'm gonna go one minus 30, 209. And that's going to give me, um, it says x there, but of course we're looking at the variable k. So I leave two lines and I write k equals 19. And then the other one is 11, so I write k equals 11. Now this is an equation and I want to, let's say, let's make the right hand side 0. So I go k minus 19 equals 0. And over here I do k minus 11 equals 0. And then this k minus 19 you can put into a bracket on the line above, and this k minus 11 you can put it into a bracket on the line above. And voila, you have factorized that, <laughs> that quadratic, shown you're working, and you have then solved it to find the answer. Even though no one knows this, but you've used a calculator to do it. Okay, um, right, let's then find j. And like a quadratic simultaneous equation, we can find j by substituting back into the linear one, which is this one here. So j is two times k minus 24. So 38, 14. So j is equal to 14. And this one, two times 11 is 22, minus 24 is minus two. Whoops, I should say j. Now, which one is which? Well, it does say here that j is less than zero. So it must be this one over here. And if you like that and you want to do more grade 9 questions on Sunday, then link is in the description for the live session. Looking forward to it already. Bye for now.